and live pictures from up above 8th Street in Little Havana where demonstrators by the thousands have been uh, sending a strong but peaceful message of protest to the federal government. Clusters of people you can see uh, filling the streets, waving flags, carrying signs in what appears to be their largest protest yet. But you can see that this crowd, though, is breaking up at this time. Of course, these uh, protesters have been out here all day protesting the government's raid on Little Havana. In the crowd, a group of women who had been praying from the start for a peaceful resolution to this showdown. Seven's Alicia Lane joins us with a look at their participation in today's protest. Alicia? Well, Craig, among the thousands of people who have taken part in this march today is the formidable group who has been involved in the fight for Elion's freedom since the get-go. That group is Mothers Against Repression. Well, we met with them before the march began and followed them throughout the day. <laughs> Meeting before the massive march, one by one, they file into Shenandoah Park. The group's organizer, Silvia Iriondo, at the center of a human circle. Hundreds of demonstrators, both men and women dressed in black, their hands locked. Each holds a white rose as the prayer begins. Prayer in the name of Elian. We just hope that this child's emotional well-being uh, uh, will not be uh, forever affected by the events, the violent events that took place last Saturday. The group singing God Bless America, followed by the Cuban National Anthem. Through it all, an air of optimism. Even though we are greatly saddened by what's happened, it has filled us with a great amount of hope that we're able to come together and that we feel a great sense of pride in who we are and what this community is all about. Soon after, they pile onto buses, shuttled over to an agreed-upon meeting site, and they march. Their lips sealed, they walk in silence. Joining in with the masses on Southwest 8th Street in the heart of Little Havana to protest the government seizure of Elian Gonzalez. The way this uh, boy was uh, taken from the house is, is totally unacceptable. This is, this is uh, okay if it is uh, a totalitarian regime, but not here in the States. Passionate words fill the streets, downcasting President Clinton and Attorney General Janet Reno for the actions taken that took Elion out of South Florida. Meanwhile, others are here to impart a message of their own. Oh, I want to show them out there that just because you're raised here, you don't forget your people in your homeland. Mothers Against Repression co-align themselves with several other Cuban-American groups, including some youth groups. As a whole, they, they tell us they don't expect to change what has happened to Elian Gonzalez, but they do want their voices to be heard to let the world know that they are united in their stance. We're live in Little Havana. Alicia Lane, 7 News. Still to come tonight from the Newsplex as we continue, it was a crime that shocked South Florida. A security guard murdered on the job. Months later, the killer's still on the run. We have the latest coming up. And in a few minutes, the bridge connecting the keys to the Florida mainland shut down to traffic in a place of car or in place of cars I should say more than a thousand people will tell you what it's all about and I'm Brent Cameron the Channel 7 Weather Center another gorgeous day all across the state which it's hard to believe actually there's a front in the area I'll show you where that is right now where it's going and what we can expect in the days ahead stay tuned the all-new 2000 Buick LeSabre. Re-engineered with more standard safety features for you and your family than any other car in its class. And exceptional fuel economy, too. Purchase a new LeSabre and get $750 cash back. See what makes LeSabre such a great value and why it's a Consumer's Digest Best Buy, a AAA Top Car Award winner, and America's best-selling full-size car eight years running. Buick LeSabre with $750 cash back. Now at your Buick dealer. At Big Bob's, we're known for the money you keep. Our warehouse is loaded with unbeatable prices on hundreds of rolls and remnants in every style and color. We sell first quality carpet in milliseconds in Berbers, plushes, prints, sculptures, and commercial carpet at way below wholesale prices, starting as low as 45 cents a square foot. I'm Big Bob. I'm just Bob. And, and if, if you, you don't, don't come, come to, to Big Bob's, Bob's we, we can't, can't save you money. money. We're located on the Palmetto at Northwest 10th Avenue, just east of Modern Age. Can I be Big Bob next time? So, what do you all think about Wendy's barbecue bacon cheeseburger? Exquisite. The barbecue sauce leaves a sweet, smoky imprint. Almost piquant. Get off your high horse, Jeb. 
I'd say more radiant than piquant. Lest we forget the freshly prepared beef and bounty of crisp toppings. In harmony with natural cheddar cheese and hickory smoked bacon. Wendy's Barbecue Bacon Cheeseburger. Come in and try one today. Hey, Cookie, what do you think? Don't ask me, cowboy. I just rustled a grub. You've seen wipeouts before, but never one like this. It's the Wipeout Sale at the Maroonie Auto Plaza, an auto nation company. We're wiping out over 1,000 sport utility vehicles. Get your Chevy Blazers, $219 a month. Nissan Xterras, $219 a month. We're even wiping out Isuzu Rodeos for $219 a month with zero down at the Maroonie Auto Plaza. Price and selection, that's Marino. No, oh, that's Maroonie. Pictures now from Cutler Ridge, US-1 at about 107th Avenue. This, you might call it a counter-demonstration earlier in the day today. These people in support of the government's action to remove Elian Gonzalez from his relative's home here support the Attorney General. And on this day, as you see there, they wanted their voices to be heard. Though in the last several minutes we understand that rally, which we understand was peaceful, is also showing signs of breaking up. Meanwhile tonight, a major bridge in the Florida Keys is back open at this hour after being closed to traffic this morning. Cars replaced by runners for a while this morning for the annual seven-mile bridge run. About 1,500 runners participated in this year's race. The bridge reopened to traffic around 9 o'clock this morning. Now, time for 7 Weather with Brent Cameron. And you couldn't ask for anything better to be outdoors, maybe to do that running or whatever you were doing today because the air certainly dry, low humidity, sunny, comfortable weather, and it's an extended stretch for us here in South Florida with the dry weather. Otherwise, across the country, much of the country dry with just a few exceptions and a chance for some severe weather to develop yet this evening, late this afternoon, just developing over parts of the Plain States and here and from Texas to parts of Oklahoma a few scattered showers into the Tennessee Valley. A little bit of moisture here, a little bit of hail falling over of some of these uh, storms into portions of the Carolinas that was happening this afternoon. And that's part of an area of low pressure that has uh, moved uh, certainly off coast, offshore, and extended to that is this frontal boundary that we'll watch with great interest. But it's coming through with, once again, very little fanfare, high pressure building in behind it, and that's just going to, once again, reassure us of more dry weather around here as we keep seeing these very weak storm systems on this upper-level flow from the northwest come through, little moisture to work with, and on that limited supply, well, virtually no precipitation and just a few extra clouds with a bit of a breeze. That's the extent of what uh, this front will bring once again, just about like the other two uh, we've seen the last couple of weeks. The one concern, fire danger. Yet for tomorrow, there is a fire weather watch that's been issued for all of South Florida yet for tomorrow. Breezes uh, picking up, especially by tomorrow afternoon. Again, the air is very dry, and so once again, that risk for some of that uh, fire danger across the area. Temperatures in the 70s and 80s statewide, and you can get an idea where the front actually is, the separation between dew points, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere in the 60s, and to the north in the 40s and 50s. Here's what we're looking at for tomorrow. Notice the warmth as it continues to grow over the Mississippi Valley, the 70s all the way up to Iowa, not far from that over portions of Minnesota. Still the cooler air with the trough and the jet stream over the northeast, about the only cool spot in the country around. Here we're going to remain warm, but a slight cool down on the other side of that front. Let's check out that forecast. And we are looking at temperatures tonight between 71 and 67 degrees. Mild and pleasant. Once again, they will see the clearing allowing for plenty of sunshine yet tomorrow. Winds are going to turn from the west to the northwest through tonight. Tomorrow coming out of the north with low humidity, highs about 84 degrees. Winds from the north and northeast uh, by later in the day, and those winds will be picking up. So, again, keep in mind the fire danger around here, and that's about it for uh, any action in our weather, it appears. A lot of sunshine and quiet weather. The pattern continues. Uh, see you again next half hour. All right, Brent, thanks. Miami-Dade detectives tonight asking for help catching several mass bandits who they say are linked to two murders. Seven's John Turchin features the case tonight on America's Most Wanted. October 8, 1999, Homestead, Florida. It was a typical quiet day at the Dade County Teachers Credit Union until... I saw a gentleman enter the door with a gun and told everybody to get down on the floor. This was a robbery. He jumped in between my window and another teller's window. This was a typical takeover of the uh, inside of the bank. Several masked gunmen entered the bank. 
forcing all the customers to the ground. Another teller in the back office heard the commotion and called police. Day County Police and Fire Department. This is the Teachers Credit Union, Day County School Employees Credit Union. Uh -huh. We've been robbed. We're in the back office. We had gunshots. I heard gunshots go off. I crawled out on the floor to make sure my friend was okay. Oh my God, please hurry. Everybody's screaming. Everyone is screaming because shots are being fired, and the bank security guard, Ray Staninsky, is about to confront the robbers. Ray knows how to handle the situation. He served as a cop for 25 years with the Miami-Dade Police Department. Ray and his partner, Tony Borowski, kicked down doors to serve fugitive warrants. We've been through hell, believe me. We never know who we're dealing with. The average small person in that door could be a tiger. Many times we come home with ripped clothes, our backs kicked or whatever. If you're a cop's wife, you get used to uh, living that kind of life and you, you worry, but when he retired, I thought I didn't have to worry about him anymore. Ray didn't sit still long. He took a job as a security guard at the credit union. He loved his job and everyone loved him. He was always here in the morning with a smile on his face trying to put us tellers in a good mood all the time, no matter what. No day for him was ever bad. Until October 8, 1999, the day when the masked bandits entered the Dade County Teachers Credit Union. Staniski initially was in the back of the bank and ran outside to protect the employees that were working. He was able to force several of the gunmen outside the door. However, he wasn't aware of an individual that he had passed armed with a gun. That individual approached him from behind and rendered a fatal shot to him. The cops were determined to catch Ray's killers, but there weren't many clues. Detectives had a hunch, so they gave it a shot. Detectives decided to have ballistics experts test the bullet that killed Ray to see if it matched bullets from other crimes. John Church and Forrest there in tonight's America's Most Wanted was shot on location here in South Florida, part of it anyway, and you can catch John's report tonight at 9 o'clock right here on WSVN 7. And we want to take you back out live now to Little Havana, 7 Sky Force over 8th Street right now where thousands have spent the day, uh, actually the past few hours, uh, gathering in the streets, still upset over the way Elian Gonzalez was removed from his Miami relative's Little Havana home. And after a series of short speeches, a rally, and a march, as you can see, many of those demonstrators are now heading home after a day of support for Elion. Meanwhile, pictures now from Cutler Ridge, US 1, and uh, Cutler Ridge there, where the crowds are beginning to break up. This is a counter-demonstration. People in support of the government action, supportive of Janet Reno, wanted their voices to be heard on this day. Peaceful, as far as we understand, at this location as well, which also is beginning to show signs of winding down. We'll be right back. Rapids Water Park. Great fun just playing in the sun on the five new water slides. Well, I jumped in Big Surf, caught a wave in the pool. I wrapped the tube around me and I felt real cool. And then I spit splash, new body blasted. at the Rapids Water Park. Spit splash, I was riding the raft, getting soaked at the Rapids Water Park. Love turns to heartache. You don't want this marriage to end, do you? You still love her. I always will. There's someone to turn to. Everything that's worth having takes time to get there. The house divided is going to fall. Judge Maybelline Ephraim. When you are upset, you say things you don't necessarily mean. Words kill. She finds the answers to love's toughest questions. Everything comes out of his mouth is a lie. Well, wait a minute, all he said is my wife. You're not his wife. I wish I Can was. Please twist the jerk. On divorce court. Weekdays at 3 on Sunday. teacher tells us all we gotta do is just say no. And the other day, a policeman came to our class talking about say no too. But my teacher doesn't have to walk home to this neighborhood. And maybe the dealers are scared of the police. But they're not scared of me. And they sure don't take no for an answer. Kevin Scott, 
and all the other kids who take the long way home. We hear you. Don't give up.